first of all, let me greet you from Lisbon, Portugal, and say that it's a big honor to be here with you. And a special thank to my dearest friend, my dearest friend Benchi Sabu, for inviting me again to be present in the, in this congress. And I'm terribly sorry not to be there physically, but I'll do my best to tell you my idea about why I think diabetes is the cornerstone of this process. So let me sh share my screen and put it in presentation. And so let's start. So again, uh, so I really think that we will have to discuss between ourselves, the healthcare professionals uh, and and what are the best therapies, pharmacological therapies, what are the best non-pharmacological therapies. But I think we often forget the role of patient education. And, and if so, let me try to explain it why. And first, let me assume what do I call therapeutic patient education. And for that, uh, let me present a document published by the World Health Organization in 1998 with a definition of what therapeutic patient education is. And as so, educational activities are, these activities are essential to the management of pathological conditions managed by healthcare providers duly trained in the field of education. And these kind of interventions are designed to help a patient or a group of patients and their families to manage their treatment and prevent avoidable complications while keeping or improving their quality of life. And uh, what kind of approaches might be effective? Well, we, the recommended ones are those interventions that are based on ideas or informed choice, acquiring self-management skills and based in group work, the additional of, of uh, audiovisual aids and the use of behavioral and social learning approaches are clearly the most effective ones. And so let me point your attention that education is not common sense of the healthcare providers. Healthcare providers have to be duly trained in this field. And these kind of approaches that are effective, we all know that, but again, we have to be trained on that. Uh, at least in my country, the medical doctors, the new medical doctors, we, they don't have enough training on the use of behavioral and social learning approaches. Okay. And while we can think that this story just started in 1972 with this uh, paper published in the New England Journal of Medicine, where Leona Mueller uh, had this title for a special article, the more efficient care of diabetic patients in a county hospital setting. And just to remind you that those patients were recruited in 1969, so a long time ago. And the idea was to check why did people with diabetes uh, went several times to emergency room to anything while they didn't have access to any other kind of care. And as that, she introduced phone calls, a new process of education for people with diabetes. And as you can see, while in 1968, this clinic attended 4,000 people, while in 1970, it attended 50% more, 6,000 people, the number of admissions reduced more than a half between the, in two years time. And so this was clearly the demonstration that educating people thinking about their needs and providing a clear answer for them is also effective in terms of the healthcare facilities. And we know that in the area of diabetes, it's clearly effic efficacy, the patient, uh, the education of people with diabetes. And we have, there are clear demonstration that foot ulcers are reduced in more or almost 50%. Hospitalization, as I demonstrated with the first paper of Leona Miller, around 90%, antibiotics in 67%, 57%, foot surgery, amputation, missed work days. So 
why are we still discussing in 2021 if we should provide good patient education? And this is also demonstrated in any or in most of uh, chronic conditions, as you can see here, uh, part of diabetes, we have asthma, DPCO, hypertension, cardiology, obesity, rheumatology, oncology. So that's sure, for sure uh, education, again, as the cornerstone for the treatment of people with any kind of condition. And so I, I, I've shown you the, that paper from Leona Miller, but just let me tell you that the, the place where I work, that's APDP, the Portuguese Diabetes Association, which is the oldest diabetes association. And as so in 1929, there was a written, written report saying that in this illness, in diabetes, the doctor must be a teacher more than in any other illness. So a new role for the healthcare providers. His job is not so much to treat the patient, but to teach him how to treat himself. So that's the role of educator. And he has to explain the basic ideas about the physiology of the illness so that the patient can understand the therapy. And that's the beginning of what we call now the structure education. So again, my question to you all is why almost 100 years after the introduction of insulin, 100 years after the, our colleagues from the past having said that, we are still discussing is it really a question of education or is it just a question of choosing the right drugs? And just to tell you my opinion, it's both. Both are equally important. And as that, in my association, in the early 30s, we had individual class, we have group class, we have introduced new ways of teaching and educating people, as you can see in the bottom left, you have a dietary kitchen, you have uh, classes with the fruits and potatoes on the table. And that was the beginning of something that we are still doing today about group education and adapting our strategy to the health literacy level of the population. So, of course, it's, re it's really important to increase the level of the health literacy of the population, but we have to start doing and taking care of the people now according to the health literacy level. So both strategies are again important. So I, I've, I've shown you that. And just tell, me, just tell you that we also are responsible for providing courses for the healthcare providers. And we have courses for more fundamentals, modular courses, advanced courses. And even in, in the in introduction course, at level one, it's about fundamentals of diabetes care. Therapeutic patient education is there, so we can try to show to every healthcare profession how important is education at every level. And of course, education is also provided for people with diabetes, and we have to take uh, care of everyone's needs. And as you can see here, this is just a summary of all the educational sessions that we have here. And uh, those were face-to-face -face before COVID, but even during the pandemic, we have provided that kind of education through webinars, through Zoom classes in every possible way. And as you can see, we have conversations on type two diabetes, sessions for parents of children with type one diabetes, we have sessions for parents of adolescents, care of the elderly, preconception, food care, physical activity, the summer camps for children with diabetes, but also now for elderly people. We have camps for insulin pumps, sessions in school, the health awareness campaigns. But we all know here at least that uh, there are barriers for therapeutic patient education. In our opinion, therapeutic and patient education, and that's not the common ground for all countries, but at least in Portugal, we think that therapeutic and patient education is a responsibility of every healthcare professional in the process. So we don't send our patients just for a, an educator, the doctors, the nurses, the dietitians, the psychologists, we are all part of the process. But most of these professional classes don't have, as I mentioned before, specific training. We don't have no adequate facilities and personnel, no good materials for education, 
and no time in daily routine. And I've, I'm going to show just a small piece of an example of how we can try to show the importance of therapeutic patient education at the consultation. And we have provided this course for many years in a basis of trained trainers, uh, always with a medical doctor and a nurse. It's a weekend course. We provide all the training materials with all the scripts that are offered to the teams. And we use this Calgary Cambridge model, as you can see, about how to do a consultation or how to provide effective consultations with these steps, initiating the session, gathering information, physical examination, explanation, and planning, closing the session, and that's providing a structure, but also building a relationship. And just to show you examples of that, what we try to discuss is how to deal with the best encounter between a healthcare professional and the patient, demonstrating that the first impression is the key element. What a person pa passes on the first date creates an ideal. A brief moment is enough to decide if you want to maintain a relationship with that person. Another thing that was, uh, a there was a lot of discussion when we start to speak about that, negotiation, Healthcare providers were not comfortable with uh, this notion that we are negotiators. We should start negotiating with our patients what are their wishes and showing what our wishes are and find a pathway in between and uh, a shortcut goal to the, up to the next consultation. And as you can see by definition, and that's not just negotiation in healthcare, it's negotiation in our daily life. It's this process of taking a decision between the interdependent parts that don't share similar preferences. So clearly we admit that we don't share those similar path preference. But it's through negotiation that both parts decide what each should give and receive in their relations. Another aspect is, are we able to discuss feelings in our consultations? And I'll just show an example that we have done in the summer camps where the youngsters had to paint. So trying to express their feelings through heart. And the question was, right, why not painting something that demonstrates how you feel about diabetes? And this was a portrait from one of, uh, of, one of the, our youngsters. And when asked to, to try to say what he was trying to to show through the painting, he said, well, the black background is diabetes, which represents the dark side of life, which we want it or not, is always present. But the other colors I painted above, it represents the different ways to overcome diabetes problems. I don't know what are your feelings when reading this and showing that painting, but I think through this kind of exercise, we had so much more information than in a regular consultation. And we provide that kind of checklist after the end of the, at the end of the consultation to healthcare providers so they can see if they are using therapeutic patient education. And with those six questions, it's about, did you take care about patient perceptions, patient needs, patient difficulties, about the adequate information, have you provided quantity according to patient needs? Have you provided qual quality according to patient capacities? Did you use teaching learning techniques, instruction, demonstration, orientation? Have you evaluated patient learnings through evaluation, validation, practice correction? Did you use positive reinforcement and, and stimulation? Was the environment interactive and facilitated learning? All are these important questions. And that training, is provided also in a friendly environment. And you can see that we do these kind of classes in between some physical activities and walking in nice areas around Lisbon. But we also have to provide more to healthcare providers. And I've just show an example of a document with the Portuguese Diabetes Society. It's about healthcare providers' competencies in health in uh, therapeutic patient educations. And how should programs with the therapeutic patient education be designed and how they should be assessed and what kind of competencies are we aiming to people with diabetes? 
It's also important, if you want to provide good programs on, on education, to be part of networks. And I've just shown examples here of how my association, APDP, is part of the IDF, the International Diabetes Federation Centers of Education. We are part of, of the Sweet Network for Pediatric Diabetes, and we are part and recognized at the European level also as important things. And we have to be always aiming to know what are the people's needs. And as an example, we have, do, we have performed this qualitative study using focus groups and content analysis on young people with type 1 diabetes. And the conclusions, you can see it on the right, though they reported difficulties with adherence to diabetes treatment and metabolic control. They referred that they were having good social support from family, friends, and the multidisciplinary healthcare team. And they refer the benefits of group activities with peers, which help them to better deal with diabetes. And based on that, we increase the participation of the peers at the summer camps with the, the allocated time slots for peer supported activities. And we have created that uh, role of the summer camp monitor and super monitor. Those are people with type one diabetes. And we have created weekly meetings of peer support with topics fitted by participants and healthcare providers may be invited for specific subjects. ADA, even in our, the document that we all know in the centers of care, had this picture about the decision cycle for patient-centered glycemic management in type 2 diabetes. If we take some time reading this structure, we all can perceive the role of education here. But if I, sh and we spoke about individualization of glycemic targets, and as you can see, we have the patient preferences in, in the second of the bottom line, but not so many things about the patient's needs, health literacy level, uh, immediate goals. And if I've shown before this picture, I think we all know that about the discussion of metformin isolated at first line, what is the second drug now, but really at the top right, you can see the role of education, but it's just that's those two small circles there. And as that, when showing that, we are putting education in a very narrow role, while even if we provide for patients the best drugs, and we know now that we have fantastic drugs for use in diabetes, if we don't provide good education, we are not aiming to take the best advantage of the drugs. And so, coming to the end, remember that therapeutic patient education are those activities uh, that are tailored to different types of healthcare providers. They are engaged in the various degrees in the care of patients with chronic di di diseases. There's a need for reference for training programs for healthcare providers. And it's not just good sense, it's formal training. And we need to have the standard in therapeutic patient education. And so it's, it was my great pleasure. And again, greetings from the team of the APDP Diabetes Portugal. And uh, it's my pleasure, and please feel free to provide any kind of questions. Thank you.